Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to share with you what is currently on my wish list. For those of you who aren't aware, I'm doing a low buy for the first half of 2022 and I've really been trying to stick to those essential pieces that I feel would add something new to what I already own as I really have a lot of the basics already covered. So it could be just the odd thing here or there that I'm missing or else maybe I'm looking for some more statement items to really help jazz things up. So I thought I'd run through everything that I've kind of got my eye on at this very point in time. I'm really excited to be partnering with Karma on this video who will know that I have talked about for many years now Essentially, I like to joke that Karma is my digital shopping assistant. It is a free app and Chrome extension which allows you to really maximize your budget when you are adding anything new to your wardrobe. I will have a link down in the description box below where you can go and check out Karma, but I am going to show you how I use it and why I find it such a beneficial tool when it comes to really stretching my budget a little bit further. Additionally, I have a really fantastic giveaway, so if you want to find out more about that, then please make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video. So as you'll know, I tend to try and allow myself 30 days before I purchase anything new or add a new item to my wardrobe because this gives me ample opportunity to reflect on whether an item is going to be right for me or whether I'm really giving into my fantasy self. It also gives me time to save up for an item. Just I think be a little bit more conscious and considerate about what I'm adding to my wardrobe and I do try to be as mindful as possible in this way. And sometimes what I will find is that an item will go out of stock and so that is one of the ways that I really like to utilize Karma but the other way is also to be notified when items go on sale because it does that. It sends you push notifications to your email or also on your phone if you've downloaded the app which I highly recommend doing uh, and that is another way that I can save a bit of money. So I want to talk you through how to actually install Karma in case you haven't signed up already and how I use it when I'm browsing my favorite stores. So what you want to do is head over to the Karma website, sign up and then download the free Chrome extension, install it to your browser. The first thing you're going to notice once it's installed is that there is this blue button on the right hand side of your browser which you can drag up and down and this will appear on any website where you can actually use the Karma tool which are most of the ones that I shop at so I find it really great because I've got everything on my wish list all in one place. And when you see an item that you like after you've been looking around for a while what you want to do is click on that blue button which you'll also notice is up in the toolbar as well and then here you can select a few different options. So you can select the color if there are various different options you can select when you get notified I always like to pick any price drop and then you can add it to your list. Then if the item goes on sale or if it's gone out of stock and then come back in stock, you'll receive an email or a push notification letting you know. And I love this because I, in addition to waiting the 30 days, I generally like to try and buy most of the things I add to my wardrobe on sale. I will give you a little bit of a glimpse at some of the things I've been saving to my Karma wish list. I like to refresh these every single season, so I've kind of split them into autumn, winter, items, spring summer items, accessories, as I find that really helps me to stay focused on what it is that I'm looking for to add to my closet. One of the other really fabulous things about Karma is that when you're at checkout it will automatically scan the web for you to see if there are any available discount codes that you can apply to save even more money off your purchase. The special feature is only available on the web browser so the Chrome extension is an absolute must. Additionally one of the other features that Karma has is a cashback feature which allows you to earn money on your purchases and I absolutely love this because then you can put that towards any future additions that you've got for your wardrobe or maybe just a little bit of play money for going out and entertainment. Now don't forget if you haven't already added Karma to your web browser I am going to have that link down in the description box below and also please stay tuned to the end of this video so that I can share with you the really great giveaway that I have in store for you. Now I want to chat through some of the things I've currently got on my wish list. This is just a snapshot at this very point in time so it is sort of subject to flux and change. Um, you know after the 30 days are up or maybe a few months have passed I might change my mind but these are sort of items that I'm looking at that I would really like to add to my wardrobe. Doesn't mean that I'm going to add them all to my closet this year and there are quite a few sort of more brands that I would like to buy from uh, where I don't have any sort of set pieces so it could be some of the things that I would like to buy might actually get fulfilled by those brands. So 
First thing that I would really, really like to add to my wardrobe this year is a navy trench coat. I talked about this in my March low buy update, which if you haven't watched that already, I'm going to link it up in the cards here so you can go have a little peek. Now, I went into Camilla and Mark into their warehouse store in Rosebury, and I tried one on, which is the same fabric as the trousers that I bought from Camilla and Mark in February. It's a really nice kind of light, scrunchy uh, sort of nylon fabric, so really easy to care for. And they had the matching trench, and I, I kind of love the way that it hung on me. I really like the fit of it, despite it being a medium large, but it was just a little bit out of my budget and I'd also already exhausted my allocation of items for the month so I had to kind of put it on hold and you know I've continued to think about that trench coat but I'm also looking around at other options. One of the other brands that I've seen which has a very very similar trench coat which I really like is Nilby P. This one looks like it's slightly thicker. Uh, it has a very different neckline to it as well so it kind of comes up quite high and I'm wondering if from a practicality standpoint might be a better option. It's also slightly less expensive as well. So navy trench coat is number one on my list. Similar vein and I did talk about this in that uh, March update as well but I would love to add a raincoat to my wardrobe. There's three brands that I've been looking at at the moment. One is Karen Walker. Uh, she did a collaboration with the yacht, one of the yachting clubs in New Zealand and I quite liked the style but I wonder if it's too short. I also saw one from Rains which my girlfriend has. She recommended it. I like that it's unisex uh, and I love the colors but I'm still not 100% sure maybe I just need to try it on and then also I saw J Crew do a nice one that is double breasted so you have a little bit more room across the chest and I kind of like that vibe but again I think it's a little bit shorter so uh, I'm really after practicality here because we have had quite a lot of rain recently. The next item on my list is definitely more of a desire or a want as opposed to a need. It is a new handbag. I have added quite a few new handbags to my uh, collection over the last couple of years so I'm definitely in no need of any. There's nothing that I really feel is missing. However, I have seen quite a few different styles that have really caught my eye. One of them is the YSL, is it called the Sanka Set bag, the 5 to 7 bag, which is a to me it kind of looks like a croissant <laughs> you know it's a shoulder bag it's very kind of petite and cute looks like it would be great just for every day or dressed up in the evenings I really like it in the black mock croc embossed leather I think that is really beautiful because it adds in this nice element of texture and shine to an outfit uh, and yeah I don't I don't know why they just remind me of croissants and I really really like that bag I've also been wanting to add a cushion tote from Loewe to my wardrobe for a while I have started to see people talk about this bag a bit more which makes me think it might be a little bit more challenging for me to find one on the pre-loved market because I think that's probably the route that I would go down. They are low over bags in general are very very expensive um, but I like this style because they have both canvas options and leather options and there's so many different colors seems like a really really practical catch-all bag which I love practicality as I keep talking about. Um, pragmatism is something that is really starting to feature quite heavily in what I add to my wardrobe these days. So uh, to me, that sort of ticks all the boxes. I'd probably be looking to add this in maybe the canvas, uh, I think the black canvas I really like, otherwise potentially a burgundy or a tan leather as opposed to a black leather just because I do have so many black leather handbags. So that's that one. If you have the cushion tote I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I have been looking at the Saint Agni minimal tote bag. It comes in two sizes but I really liked how unassuming and how uh, unobtrusive this bag is. It's very kind of subtle, it's very chic, uh, but it doesn't feel like just your basic black tote bag. And I thought that one was absolutely stunning. And then the final bag that I've been looking at is the Jill Sander. It's called the Envelope Leather Clutch Bag. And this is another shoulder bag. So you can see there's two different styles of handbag that I would really like to add to my closet. One being a, a new tote and one being a small shoulder bag. Uh, and I love the gloss on this bag. Uh, the one that I sort of bookmarked is in this beautiful camel color. It's a little bit more of a cool toned camel, uh, a bit more muted, it's not too bright. And 
again, I just, I love the shape of it. I love the structure and I like that glossy effect. It is something that would add texture to my outfit and just be an interesting element uh, as an overall styling piece, but also I suspect practical too, because I tend to find I either need a larger tote or I need a smaller bag just for the essentials. There are actually a couple of pieces from Evelyn as well. One of which is a bag, the mini studio leather bag from Evelyn. I, oh, it's in the other room because I'm using it at the moment. I'm currently using my Everlane Studio bag in the black leather, which I've had for a few years now. It's just such a great bag, a really good uh, affordable alternative to the Celine um, so, Sangal So bag, which I've talked about before. And I have done a review on that bag. I'm going to link it down below. But they do a mini size and I love how cute and petite it is. The fact that you can wear it cross body. And I think it would be the perfect complement to the larger tote that I've got as it would function as more of that smaller bag. The other item from Everlane that I would quite like to add to my wardrobe are their utility barrel pants in it's almost a sage green or a khaki olive color. I have these trousers in the black and they really are very very nice. I like the fact that they've got a bit of uh, stretch to them but they are really really thick and feel really durable and weighty and uh, I've had a lot of fun sort of playing around with the black pair and I think it would be a nice way to incorporate those earthier elements into my wardrobe which is definitely the direction that my color palette has steered towards over the past couple of years. Now let's stick to trousers and the next item on my list is a pair of jeans and this is very much influenced by one of my YouTube friends friends Amy from Chase Amy. I met her years ago when we were in Dallas in 2017 um, and she's just such a sweetheart. So she talked about the Goldie Riley high rise straight crop jeans in one of her videos. Uh, you probably heard me talk about how I have a shorter length inseam for my height. I'm 172 centimeters tall which is five foot eight so reasonably tall but I've actually found when I watch other YouTubers a lot of them who are three inches or even more sometimes shorter than me have longer legs than I have <laughs> so uh, I'm often looking for petite length or cropped jeans uh, just the way it is so I've got a long torso so I also want a high rise to help create a bit of visual balance in terms of my proportions so these kind of sound sounded like they'd be right up my street uh, a Goldie is a denim brand I've wanted to shop from for years but it's really expensive and I don't know about you but I don't enjoy the process of shopping for new jeans. I think it can be a bit of a ball ache and just one of those ones where you get all hot and flustered when you're in the changing room. So quite often I, I really do try and put off buying new jeans and it's why I stick to the same ones that I know over and over again because I know my size. Uh, but that's a pair that I would really like to try so I've been thinking about dipping my toes into the Goldie world but I have heard that the styles run large so if any of you have these jeans again please share your feedback on the sizing down below. Then of course uh, I've talked about how I would love to buy something from Lee Matthews in particular one of their silk Stella skirts. I love a slip skirt, really really got into wearing them a lot more uh, in 2021 and it's something I see myself wearing a lot throughout 2022 as well just with a big oversized knit. I think it's just such an easy and chic combo that feels very effortless. So that particular skirt I love because it has the uh, additional, uh, what do you call it, it's got the panel uh, along the hemline. Um, almost like a frill detail and unfortunately I know that's not the technical term it's just my my brain has gone absolutely blank but I really like that element it feels a little bit more elevated than just your basic bias cut slip skirt so a brand that I've been wanting to shop from for years is Soft Goat I've heard that their cashmere is just exceptionally soft and I know, I know, I have a knitwear obsession, but everyone has, I think, these areas in their wardrobe where they tend to go a little bit crazier than others, and knitwear is definitely mine, because I feel like it's such a big part of uh, my autumn winter personal style. So they do a very similar knit to the Mal Veda sweater that I had last year, or that I'm gonna be wearing this year again, which I'm really excited to pull out again, in 100% cashmere, which is also, I suppose, uh, very similar to the Celine knit that I bought myself for my birthday this year. So I thought it would be nice to try that particular style out, maybe in the olive green. Can you see a bit of a theme here? I'm trying to steer clear a little bit more of just the blacks and whites, uh, but they do have some really nice colors on their website and I've only heard good things about the brand. So 
definitely one that I am keeping my eye on and maybe might look to splurge on some point in 2022. Oh, okay, maybe we can talk about a pair of shoes because you guys know I love shoes. Uh, Dear Francis is a brand that I have been really keeping my eye on a lot more recently. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just because people are talking about them a lot more, though my first purchase from the brand was probably five years ago, six years ago, a pair of uh, tobacco suede and mesh very very high sandals uh, which I think I maybe wore once so far too high for me uh, but the brand have some really beautiful designs in particular the one that I'm most drawn to at the moment are the Bailey sandals uh, so it's coming into spring summer in the UK or in the northern hemisphere should I say so um, yeah I've, I've really been eyeing those up I love a little bit of a pop of red at the feet. Uh, I think when you are wearing a very kind of minimal toned outfit and then you have this vibrant color with accessories, it's just a interesting way to make an outfit pop. And these come in, yeah, in the red, and then they also come in a really lovely, rich chocolate brown. So I would love to potentially add a pair of those to my wardrobe in one of the two colors. Not sure which, uh, but they do have very much a bit of a vibe to the Tibby sandals that I very much love as well, so wrap around the ankle, that sort of thing. But I thought they were very, very sweet, and there's something I am looking at. Then I've been doing a little bit of a browse on the Reformation website, and you've probably heard me talk about how I'm really finding myself loving trousers a lot more this year, and I came across the Mason trousers on Reformation site, which I think are beautiful. I have bought trousers from them before and found they fit really large, so sizing is one thing I'm not 100% sure on, but these, again, they come in a few different colors, but I'd probably go for the olive green because it's very muted, it's very desaturated, it almost has a gray tone to it, and I thought it would be a really fun piece to style with. I also like the fact that they're straighter through the leg and they are quite long, so for me, I'd maybe wear them with an open-toed sandal or with boots and probably not get them taken up, which which is a new thing for me but I am sort of enjoying the idea of having various leg lengths in my wardrobe as well and what that can do for my outfits. Okay next item I'd really like to add to my wardrobe this year is a pair of black lace-up combat boots. I talked about this I think maybe on my blog or on my Instagram or in a previous video. Memory escapes me but this is something that I'm not 100% sure is my personal style so I really really need to try them on first but I think that they can look really edgy and tough and they can juxtapose against more feminine elements in a really nice way uh, and I can see them being a really practical piece too. There are two pairs which I would say probably are at the front of my list. So one being a pair from AD which I can already vouch for the fact I've got a pair of 80 sandals which I bought in January and I love them. The quality of the leather is just beautiful and I'm really really happy with them as a pair of shoes. So I thought um, these ones that I've seen from 80 which I have on screen I thought they were really lovely. Uh, the Row also do a really great pair and I've seen a few of them in my size pop up on the Real Real. So I've been tempted as to whether or not maybe I could purchase a pair of them pre-loved though they are a lot more expensive so it might be something that I maybe try on in my home at more affordable price point and see if maybe it is something I think is worth splurging on a bit more depending on my cost per wear because that's something I try to keep in mind when I'm adding anything new to my wardrobe. Another thing I'd really like to add to my wardrobe this year is a new statement necklace. Uh, I think it must have been two years ago now maybe yeah um, I added this country road super duper chunky chain necklace to my wardrobe and I really love this piece when I want something that is going to make more of a statement around my neck that's a bit louder uh, because I tend to wear more minimal pieces although I am I am springing for the statement earring today which I am loving uh, so I've seen a couple that I like one is from Oriton and it is this sort of more I would say it's a bit more of a softer chunky necklace style as compared to this one here from Country Road because the links are more spherical so it does have those rounded edges and I think it's really really beautiful. The other one that I saw but this is it's a lot more expensive and it does have a different vibe is from Completed Works and it is half beads and they're these jade green colored beads 
and then the other half is sort of more pearls and I do also really like that sort of an element maybe to be worn with uh, either a very flat high neckline so not not something that is chunky like this around the collar or with something that is a bit more open at the chest so could be a really beautiful shirt something like that but I thought that was a really beautiful one I'm keeping my eyes peeled because that's definitely something I would like to buy this year I've also been looking at a dress from air the label which is an Australian brand uh, I believe part of the iconic sort of in-house staple of brands uh, it has this frill detail across the bust and then it is just a very very simple sort of a slip style midi dress with spaghetti straps really easy breezy piece something that you could effortlessly layer and I quite like that sort of component to it something that I, it doesn't feel overly fashionable though it does come in some prints I'm not 100% set on what color I would want to try but there's quite a few things that I've seen on the Iconic that I like recently and I've been thinking about maybe doing a little bit of a try on session um, let me know if that's something you would be interested in just to sort of see how the items fit on my body and whether or not uh, any of them are things I want to maybe consider really seriously to uh, add to my closet last thing I'd really like to add to my wardrobe this year is a new wallet now I purchased the Givenchy GV3 wallet a few years ago and it's been a really bulky addition to my handbag. It is so much chunkier than any of the other wallets I had previously, which were small card holders that had a little zippy section, which I found really convenient. Uh, and they didn't take up much space. They would transfer easily from a smaller bag to a larger one. Um, and I found when I switched to the Givenchy wallet, it fit the exact same amount of things while being about three times the size in terms of both the physical size and also how much space it took up in my handbag. So I'm thinking I would like to go back to a zippy style um, wallet, but maybe get myself something special either from Celine or there's also one from Saint Laurent that I've seen that I like. They're both the same kind of style. So uh, it's more just a matter of price and color. I don't think I'd get one in black. I'd probably get a color just so that I have something exciting when I'm pulling out my wallet from my purse. It's a little bit more fun and a bit more cheerful and colorful. Then there are four brands here that I would really like to purchase from this year, which I wanted to uh, mention as a way to wrap up this video. The first one being Philippa K. I've heard so many people talk about this brand. They seem to do really, really beautiful trousers. And I think that is probably the area that I would look to purchase from them first as a starting point point um, I may kind of wait until they do a sale so maybe I'll add some things to my karma list and then I can keep an eye out for those alerts then I'd also really like to buy something new from Koto uh, this is a New Zealand brand I've shopped from there before and they do really beautiful kind of sustainably consciously made clothing um, I'll link their website down below and yeah I, I haven't really seen anything specific but I do quite often keep an eye out on their website to see what they've got coming new um, Studio Nicholson is another brand. They do the most luscious, beautiful, sumptuous knitwear. Oh my gosh. I was very, very tempted by the sale to buy one of their knits. Again, I've got a real knitwear problem. <laughs> um, but again, it's just a brand that I constantly have had my eye on and would love to purchase something from. I just have never really bit the bullet. There's always been something else that has distracted me. And then the final brand is Le Basics. So this is an Australian owned brand, I believe. I've seen a few people I follow who are based here talk about them and they just do those core pieces for your wardrobe. So I was thinking of maybe trying out one of their t-shirts, maybe one of their singlets, definitely another brand that I have been looking at. Um, but yeah, that is kind of a little look at my wish list uh, at this very point in time. So as I said, it's subject to change. Some of these things might fall off. There might be new things that kind of come on and there's always other little bits and pieces that I sort of uh, see that really in, are enticing and that kind of draw me in but uh, not necessarily always items that I will end up purchasing and adding to my closet especially this year as for the first half of the year I'm really limiting what I am buying. Now as I mentioned at the start of this video I have a really fabulous giveaway that I want to share with you so thank you so much for your patience and for making it this far. I'm going to be giving away a $200 voucher to Net-A-Porter which is one of my favorite places to really look for items that are a little bit more splurge worthy that cost a bit more but that I see as being long-lasting staples in my own closet and I 
hope that whoever wins this will be able to purchase something that they see themselves wearing for years and years to come. In order to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is download the Karma extension if you haven't done so already. Head over to Netta Forte and save three items to your wish list, and then leave a comment down below letting me know your Instagram handle and also what items you saved using Karma to one of your lists from Netta Forte. I will draw the winner in two weeks' time, but all that information will be down in the description box below, along with that link to download the Karma extension and sign up for your own account. Yeah, good luck to everybody who enters, and I hope for those of you who haven't actually used Karma before that you find it a really useful part of of your shopping plan moving forward. So yeah, that is kind of it from me today. Thank you again to Karma for partnering with me on this video. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with me and for watching. I also would love to know if you aren't interested in entering the giveaway, what is on your wish list right now? What are you loving? Is there anything, any brands that you think I should be keeping my eye out on? Uh, please tell me in the comment section below and I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.